Yes. Okay, let me get in the zone. Yay, all right, bye. going on today <laughs> okay let's just check make sure you guys you guys can hear my mic can you hear me good morning okay oh god we have been working all week we that was the used equipment video that's the store video we have been working all week to redo the store I brought in 10 G's worth of inventory. I have another 20 G's I still have to spend on the store. Uh, okay. So, Mike, good, loud and clear. Uh, good morning, Dinky. Wow. So, the number is 84 Grow Boss. If you have a call, 
Apparently I've been live streaming for quite a while, so I had to go back and delete earlier because I was walking around because it's 118 degrees in Las Vegas with no shirt on. I don't even know how that works. Don't even know how that ended up on YouTube. That's what my fat ass needs to be on YouTube with no shirt on. Oh, you like the new shelf? Check this out. Okay, so we took all the old shelves, we painted them brown, like this stain. Oh, so tired. And uh, we brought in a whole bunch of new inventory. I've even got Mars lights out, the Mars LED lights out there. I bought stacks of Mars LEDs. Why? Because I told you last week, everything works. I'm going to start selling everything because everything works. And even if I don't carry the super expensive LEDs, so we couldn't get it all done in one week. You can't bring enough inventory in in one week if you don't know where it goes. Um, but like for the longest time, I was being like the store of minimum, like I had the minimum nonsense necessary to grow cannabis. Oh, you want to see my favorite thing? I'll show you my favorite thing. This uh, right here. Check this out. So I spent a couple hours building this rock wool stand because there's like 14 different sizes. So, so, so there's so many sizes, like it takes up so much room in my store. In addition to, oh, that light is totally washing me out. Wait, that light's totally washing me out. So we ended up. I built this thing to get all of the smart pots and all of the grow to all the rock wool in one place nice and organized because uh, oh my god it takes up so much shelf space um, rock tower my rock tower thank you Semit dude Semit you're always you always have the just the right comment Oh man, that light is just washing me out. Good thing it's going to be a short show today because I am super tired. If you have questions about growing cannabis, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. The number is 84 Grow Boss. It's going to be a short show today. Like, I am going to get out of here at the one hour mark. I broke, uh, you know, those little down stems, those little glass ones that go in there? I broke I broke mine this week so I'm using this thing I break them every two weeks I mean there's a lot of people smoke off this bong so I've been using this thing with that little 14 or 17 inch end but now I have to hold it like this when I'm smoking it um Ara Gerardo why are wider parts pots better than deeper pots it depends on the height of your garden but in all cases, the plant will be wider than the pot. In all cases, you'll never have a pot that's wider than a plant. It's just not when you're, not when they're small, not when they're large. You just never have a plant. <coughs> we have had some serious record breaking heat here in Vegas. Um, DMT. I'll tell you here in Vegas. Oh shit, you know what I got for you? I'll show you something. <clears throat> all right, I am so pleased all of a sudden. Okay this I bought this yesterday this is a uh, blue lab continuous meter it's a handheld but usually stuff like this is continuous it's a handheld I've got the uh, pH for it as well 
Dude. We buy it all summer. We sell it all winter. That's what happens when it gets hot. I've got this one here. I've got a Hannah here that I bought like literally last week. So I've got this Hannah and that blue lab and you can have this blue lab. Let's see what let's see what they go for on eBay. eBay blue lab, blue lab. One word, blue lab. Yeah. Continue OUS meter. Okay, so that's best match. We'll go to lowest first. Mike, streaming, check. Okay, so 250 for this looks sort of like the old model, right? Like, oh, here's mine, 189. Okay, so you can have, oh, let's look at the uh, Hannah. What is this one? Let's check out what the Hannah is. 189. Hannah. And he'll come to you. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is. No. Okay. Let's get a little more information about this. This is the Hannah HI 9813-6. HI 9813-6. Okay, Lois first, buy it now. Okay, so have I got a deal for you? Woo, portable meter, that one, uh, what's up? Okay, all right, let's take a look. It's 50 bucks is pretty low. Oh, that's not my meter. Okay, let's keep on cruising. Keep, there's my meter, 109. That's pretty close to this meter. It's got the little, yeah, I think this is, uh, is that's this meter here, okay. So the blue lab is 189 and this one is 120 with shipping. So have I got a deal for you? What if you came to my store today and you wanted this blue lab? And I tell you guys, I buy it all summer and I Okay, I buy it all summer and I sell it all winter. And so this blue lab here, boom, how's that? You can have that blue lab for 125 cash if you bring me 125 cash today you can have that blue lab and i've got the ph attachment for it bring me 90 bucks and you can have this hannah probe ph ppm super fancy and, and i'll tell you why because we pulled the security cabinet apart yesterday to to put stuff around the store because you know, I got a lot more stuff. I've got that little shelf right there, that shelf all the way on the left of the image to put little bottles on. I've got that little bottle shelf there. Okay, so we started pulling stuff out of the security cabinet. And you know what I learned? I learned our security cabinet is so secure that we put stuff there to never get sold. That's, uh, that's how secure my security cabinet is. So, ha, no more security cabinet. Because things just, product just goes there to die. I mean, oh, fuck. All right, so product just goes there. <laughs> That's what happens when you do some live shit right there. Good morning, Cooper. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, 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 Paul. Yeah, yeah. But wait, if you order now, <laughs> if you buy these meter now, I'll throw in a broken ass bong stem. Ah, Jeremy Turpin is super funny, yeah. Um, let's see. I was going to go through a couple of comments. Oh, okay, that was, I specifically wanted to go through. Uh, let's, uh. Huh. Because software stopped running okay uh. okay I don't know if I just lost you for a sec but you should be able to hear me it should be still streaming okay um, whatever Firefox froze 
Okay, let's make sure you guys got me. Live stream still up. It's public. Okay, so I'll take a call. 815, good morning. Hey, Grow Boss, good morning. Happy Saturday. Oh, that's right. Um, your store's looking good. It's, it's interesting how you bringing in a bunch of merchandise that you're going to be that salesman. That's what you're in business for. But uh, um, my question is, you know, I followed your program, um, and I was on the underfed side, all grow, and I liked it better than overfeeding. But my question is, when I cut down the three plants, the leaves were, I mean, the fan leaves, grow boss, were just faded yellow there's no no life like no green at all maybe just the tear just by the stem how come on some you know online and all that i see these growers that are fit perfect fan leaves uh, uh you know it, they look like i do with veg it, it, do the better growers finish with no yellowing or do you want to be yellow to have a nice flush to the smoke. You okay, know what so, I mean? So first, you bring up that point at the very end, you drop the bomb, and that is, is it part of the flush? So if it's part of the flush, hydroponics. Yes, I I got I got Roots Organic Soil. I got a pallet of it. 20 bucks a bag, six for 100. Yeah, we don't open till 10, though. All right, bye. <laughs> my show's gonna end at 10 because someone's coming in to buy stuff and I'm gonna be able to get out of here um <laughs> so you bring up at the very it, last so my, at the very last yes. at the very end of it you bring up the flush right so let's talk about what actually happens so they say that plants absorb almost all the nitrogen that they're going to use early on in veg so even though they continue to use nitrogen during flower they absorb it all and store it early on while they're growing so what happens right. it, when they yellow is they suck the nitrogen out of the plant that's that that's that nitrogen a nice even pale yellow but then right. when winter comes um absic i think the word is absicate it's what abscess it's a b i c s s or and it's i s s or something it's when the leaves fall off the plant for the season and when the leaves fall off the plant for the season, what's left in them? It turns out it's PK. So there's PK left in the leaves. They, it rots back into the ground. And next year or a couple years, the plant cycles it back up again. So the plant provides its own stuff back in. Back, it provides its own stuff back for its own, like, no waste. That's why they till under or they rotate crops, stuff like that. Um, right. So in this particular case, uh, I, I see your point. Some leaves are super Pete, green all the way to the end. I concur. Let me make yeah, this and observation. They, I, and the, and the, but let me let me continue. And the buds look and the right and the buds look like they're. I mean, I looked at the pistols on these pictures. I see in in the in the in the you know the red and they're ready to. It's ready. It looks like a ready bud. But I look at their fan leaves. It's green. Everything's perfect on it. And to me, is that because will the smoke be harsher because it, the stuff's not yellowing and releasing the nitrogen before you start smoking it? Is it better to have yellow? Do you think? I I, I understand. Same question. So I'm, I'm still working through it. So I'm giving you all the components that go through my brain. I got you. When we talk about yellow, so on one hand, we know what the natural process is. The natural process yes. is the plant sucks up that yeah sucks up the green there's no more green the leaves absicate they fall off and they go back into the soil right okay now right. the next question is hydro when you're in hydro generally you chop 10 days to two weeks early why because in hydro you grow for weight otherwise why would you be in hydro it doesn't make better bud because we all agree that hydro grows faster and by definition if it grows faster, then there's a shorter time frame. However, if all the magic happens at the end, for instance, the plants really crystallize in those last two or three weeks, two weeks, 
the plants really crystallize during those last two weeks. They sugar up. Okay, so the plants sugar up in the last two weeks, except you're in hydro, and instead of 14 days, you get seven. So, you get less, if all the magic happens at the end, and hydro's faster, you get, you get less end time. Therefore, you get less quality, for no other reason than that. Okay, once we've determined if, if it's in hydro, and the leaves are green, See where I'm going with this? If you're gonna harvest a week early and the leaves are still green, it, especially if somebody in a media has two weeks to go, if you're in hydro and you chop 10 days, seven uh, days yeah. early, because you, yeah. in hydro, you grow based on weight. Hydro is production level. It does not grow the highest quality bud. Soil grows the highest quality bud. And I did grow, I did grow in soil, so I had to go longer. So that, I see what you're saying, maybe I allowed my plants to mature to the older state of yellowing and, and stuff where the other guys in hydro maybe finish uh, early so it's going to be a little greener is that what you're saying yes sir things happen in a shorter time frame so that's one thing another thing right. is when i say in terms now we're hang on let me let me phrase this right because i have to be careful here I think I, got, I think I have this. Okay. I tell you NPK is all the same shit. They're all the same minerals. They're all worthless. All the nutrients are the same. You always hear me say that. Now, they're not all exactly the same. Technically, they have different formulas of the same minerals. So they're all made for the same product. No, there isn't any mineral that comes. There isn't any nutrient that comes and says, we've got a space mineral that's new on the, you know what I mean? Okay. So if it's all the same, what we're talking about is different formulas of the same, of the same compounds. Now, <clears throat> facilities generally use two products for their nutrients. They use a 10-0-0 and a 0 10, 10 So what you do is you throw your 10 in. Let's say you put 200, let's say you put 500 ppm of 10 in. You know you have 500 ppm of N. Then you put 500 ppm of 10, 10 in. Okay, you know you have 250 ppm K, 250 ppm P. So now you know what you have. Now if you put, if you double the PK, now you know everything's the same. So you have this sort of infinite control if you have a 10-0-0, a 0 10 and a 0 0 product. So the question becomes, and this is what you're asking me because it's a very, very fine refinement point. And, and I tell you guys nutrients are all the same. And I tell you it's all the same shit and the questions are always the same. But I also say that I can only put so fine a point on it. Why? Because without growing it three times in a row and being successful three times in a row, I can't give you a certain level of detail. So, right. you're at the point where I can describe the process. And this is, you know... I, I don't know it all. I mean, people say stuff, you know, I, I get all sorts of cracks and comments on YouTube and people say all sorts of stuff, but the reality is I don't know it all, but I can piece it together. So we know how the leaves perform. We know that nutrients are harsh. We know that you might not be burning them with nutrients. And then what we don't know is, do you have the right mix of those nutrients? Now, the question becomes is, could you early on because plants absorb almost all the nitrogen they want in the first part of their life could you early on have added more nitrogen or could you have supplemented them a little later on during flower i, I my apologies and i always appreciate the call from you but i, I gotta say i could i can't uh I can't. I know, no, I know you said it right because I, I, I was under the whole time going up to it. I, let me ask you because you, you you said you did grow. What? How did how did your plants finish for the most part? Did you have green fan leaves or were you yellow on yours? As time went on, they yellowed. They always yellow at the end for me because I I just don't feed them that much. Now, that's not yeah, always me true. Either. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, hang good. on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. That's not yeah. always true. I'd like to I'd like to preface that with this: um, leaves that turn yellow turned yellow. Sometimes they turn purple. 
There are some strains. You know what? That, that's weird. There are right, some right, strains. Wait, wait, boss. That's... Listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I, the, I did a, um, a blue dream that was yellow, and then I, I had that cool like sixty-eight, and then for the final two weeks, they actually turned purple on top of the yellow, which was really interesting. They were finished purple, but they were yellow before they purple. There was in, I don't know how they did that, but it happened. So. Okay. Now, when you had said, okay, I'll comment on that in a sec, but when you had said purple, when you had said yellow earlier in your leaves, it, was it the whole plant? Was it the top of the plant? Was it the bottom of the plant? Tell me a little bit more. Was the yellow no. even? Yeah, it was yellow and even from the, from the, uh, from the bottom up. I, I was always underfeeding. I mean, I was really doing low PPM. I, 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 I liked that whole process of being under... So I know I underfed it when it went at the flower, and then it really took off, and, and you know, it, it, I, I didn't up it like I should have. So it finished less, and then I flushed it, too, for a couple weeks of just water. And I know you're saying, you, you know, you always say that you, you don't have to worry about flushing it if you underfeed it and you don't give it too much, that you don't have to flush too much, if I remember. Well, if you give it the correct yet, amount of food, the correct amount of food. And that is also includes the correct ratio. So given the correct ratio, more, the correct quantity and ratio, more is not better. There comes a point where there's diminishing returns. That's what I say, diminishing returns. And it's all nutrients, it's all products. There's all products have well, diminishing you know, returns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I noticed too? This, this last grow, I did 20 ounces in three plants in a two by six area. Light, the light, light, light. Tell it. me the light. Tell me about horsepower. Uh, what what kind of light? Of course. Uh, I use two four hundred watt uh, um, metal hell light in in the veg, and then I flip it to HPS in there, and I got them on uh, uh, light movers in a two by six closet. So it's just moving like. A, a couple feet, but it changes the shadows and it moves and it got real good. The grow before I did 24, but here's my point. The grow before I was over and I got it to 24 and a half ounces. This one I went under and I, I did 20 different plants and stuff so I understand. But here's what I noticed. It's stronger. It's stronger and it's so much easier on the tongue and the throat when you smoke it. If that if that makes sense you know it's just so much cleaner of an herb when, when you when you're underfeed it than if you burn it just to get volume and kind of what you were talking about right there's always that diminishing return so when people talk right. about pumping their hydro up to 1800 ppm in their water do you understand why i say yeah. hydro is all about the weight and media is all about the quality and even though i tell you it's all the same shit all the shit that comes out of hydro is the same shit. All the shit that comes out of soil is the same shit. And while there may be, all right, listen, thanks for the call. And while there may be, uh, you know, while there may be multiple types of bud. Oh, uh, I was telling you guys last week, somebody, one of the facilities comes in and they have to buy a quantity to get that price of name brand cannabis. So anything that they don't sell as the name brand, they just have a, they just have a jar they call popcorn, and they just a strain they call popcorn. Listen, anybody can make up a strain, and strains are fun. But I mean, come on, and that's that's a big reason why I avoid like going on other shows, or specifically like why I, I mean like I know I talk about Project Grow House, and believe me, I'm heading toward Project Grow House. I got two episodes of the Bushmaster to post and I had to finish the store because it was a freaking disaster. Oh. oh, what was I gonna get back to on the call? Oh, the last thing I wanted to talk about on uh, 815's call was, was genetics. We were talking about the color of the leaf. You know, there's some things you can and can't fight with the strain that you have. And there's just, there's just things that you can and can't fight. So what I'm suggesting is that when you grow cannabis, there is a there are things that you can easily improve upon and save money on, and then there are things that are difficult 
to improve upon and save you little or a lot of money. 352, what can I do for you? Hey, Corbos, good morning, bro. Great good show, morning. as always. Good morning. Good morning, Pat. So, Robos, I wanted to talk to you about um, about the lights, okay, the lighting. So, you know, I usually start out with uh, like a 600 HPS, right? And um, I start out with the HPS, the 600 from, you know, either clones or seeds, you know, depending. So, what I don't know is, do you think that maybe it would be a good idea to maybe purchase like a 250 watt bulb, you know, to start the young plants with instead of a 600 watt bulb. And, and if I can use that 250 watt bulb with that 600 watt magnet ballast that, that I use for that 600 watt lamp, you know, that, that I came with. Okay, so this, oh, if you come in today, you can have that blue lab meter for 125 and that Hannah meter. For ninety dollars cash, you what you're talking about, and you'll see in this picture that's coming up on a sec. Um, I'm putting together that standard light picture that we all that we always see, and that is this thing. And all I'm going to do is put in your light. So if you have a cutting, all I'm suggesting is this: is if you have a if you have a cutting that wants that wants just little cutting and this little cutting wants 100 watts then you would have to put this light i mean this is this is this is what you guys always scream at me about right because about putting your light too close and i always go what are you talking about your light too close listen your light can be a billion degrees if you put it 96 million miles away but if this plant wants 100 watts then this space right here better be something like five feet away, right? Because that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Because 600 watts at one foot is 600 watts. At two feet, it's 500 watts. At three feet, it's 400 watts. At four feet, it's 300 watts. At five feet, it's 200 watts. At six feet, it's uh. 100 watts. So all I'm saying is I don't care what light you use. The important aspect that you must grasp about all light is that 100 watts worth of light like you have to it, it is literally the inverse so if you see this 100 watts when this plant wants 600 watt this is a little bit sorry this is a 600 watt canopy all right so think about it like that if you have a 600 watt light so i'll even take it a step further to give you a more accurate example okay let's do this um Hang on one sec. That way. Okay, so this much can't. Um, actually, I think I like I like the example, but I'm going to take it one step further for you. You have, you sir, have a 600 watt light. If we continue the thought and we look at it like this, um, okay, yeah, we'll just have to do it like this. I get it. Um, I think what I'm looking for is this. Give me one sec, because, okay, so if you do this and this, is your actual canopy for let's say 600 watts this is 600 watt canopy um and i tell you guys that with like a 600 watt light that you should probably finish about four feet away okay now you sir have a clone you have a little plant down here like this so if we take this same light and and we just put it over here all I'm saying is that in terms of perspective this is I mean 
this is eight feet away. I mean, all I'm doing is giving you some perspective here because I tell you, so if over here you need, let's see, if over here you need this much canopy, my mic's working. I'm pressing a lot of buttons, so I'm checking to make sure my mic's working. All right. If you need mm, this everything much, sounds good. Say that again. Everything sounds good. Okay. All right. If you need this much canopy for a 600 watt, all I'm saying is, is that, is that there's this relationship of light. Now, I don't care if you, this is a great picture. You know what? I am actually going to save it as light. Oh, oh yeah. I'm going to save that, this one for later because I always have to explain it again and again. So, if you can, when you look at these pictures, I just want to put this in perspective that if this thing wants 100 watt, then it better be eight feet away. So the question always comes to this, and, and I, think, I think I understand what you're asking. So let me show you this picture. Okay, I like to show you guys this picture because this is a three-week veg. And it's super interesting because this light is a 100 watt, this is a two, this is a two and these are 200 watts. This is super, I, I always like this this set of pictures and you'll see why um okay so th this is just a picture i snatched off the internet and it's one of two that goes together so so in terms of this picture now there are 10 plants under the first light 10 plants under the second light and when we look at the lights, there is a 100 watt light and the other three are 200 watt light. Okay, this is, this is week number one. This is week number two. Both of these are week number three. Okay, so that's all this. And just to give you some perspective, I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to show you the next component in the picture. And of course, both of these are week number four. And okay. So these are week number four. Just to keep this in perspective. Oh, and these things, I might as well keep going with it. These things are 300 watt lights. Okay. All right. So this, this is a, uh, this is how I like to show you guys when I talk about first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, and shifting. Those are 10 plants under the first light, 10 plants under the second light, five plants under the next two lights. So here's just a small amount of math. If the first 10 plants want 100 watts, those plants can grow 10 watts big. Why? Because 100 divided by 10 is 10. If you put the same 10 plants and you move them under 200 watts, they can grow twice as big because there's twice the light. And then in week three, instead of putting 10 plants under 200 watts to grow them each 20 watts big, what happens in week three? We notice, oh, we halved the plants. So if 10 plants under 200 watts can grow 20 watts big, then five plants under 200 watts can grow 40 watts big. That's week three. And then we move over to week four at 300 watts with five plants. Okay, that's why I always tell you 300 watts can grow five plants that look like this. Each one of those plants is 60 watts big. Now, when I say 60 watts, technically I mean this part right here is about 60 watts big. Because if you look at this part down here, you would trim it. And this part right up here, you would trim it. And then you'd be left with this bushy plant that gives you something like, uh, 
something like and I'll show you the next picture so we got hotline this is then I, I just boom oh no not this one just love this guy these sideways pictures see that look at that and that's the sideways aspect oh you know what we even did this before oh shit there's our canopy why because this has three times the plant in it it was literally it was literally this canopy okay that's six plants and then after the show they added they asked me about it they added three more plants in you can see how much thicker it looks and we went from the top shot of this one to this ah, just by adding three more plants so what I'm saying is not every vehicle wants to be shifted at the same RPM nor should you be shifting the same vehicle at the same RPM if you have different goals for instance you have the goal of, of high horsepower you want to smoke tires offline okay you got to rev it up I'm just saying there's just that's just the okay so did I lose the internet again mm -hmm. uh, did one of my new buttons okay hang on start it again looks good wait okay wait hang on a sec you know what oh wait wait I think I got my I get my no the internet's not working okay so when I hang on a sec I need the task manager you gotta give me one sec I have to fix this okay Firefox and it, it seems to be working on this end Robo it's, it's working here from my end yes so sir good so far Okay, so it's streaming. I know, but for some reason, my internet has started freezing. And I'm trying to use it to make sure I got what's going on is what I'm looking at for the next thing for you. And okay. All right. I got to make sure that. Okay. I'm good here. Good here. Thank you. Good here. Okay, all right, all right, I appreciate it. Okay, listen, there's a lot of technology going on. And I'm sitting here getting high. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so, 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 well, Grobos, really quick. So, uh, you mentioned something about the distance for the 600 light, and it seems like it, it diminishes by about 100 feet per foot. And so, I'm wondering about, I'm thinking then a 600 watt light, the minimum it should be hanging would be like eight feet or something, huh? Okay, and how tall are the tents huh? that you got? Okay, how tall are the tents that you buy online? Seven feet. Well, the tent that I got, is, it's only seven feet tall. Right, seven so I'm feet. thinking I'm going to just no. trash that and, and forget about the tent no, no. and just hang wait, it on the ceiling there. No, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. That's why. No, sir. That's no. why. the. I can't see. I can't show you because I can't show you the internet. No, I would like to make the observation. That's why I show you that different sized hoods okay up oh, you can have that meter for 125 bucks and that one for 90 wait 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 let me I'm, I'm pulling up a picture for you okay that's why I tell you that you have to pay attention to the space that you're in because if you do too small of a space um, let's see that's why I tell you you have to pay attention to both the shape of your hood and the shape of your plant because if you put a scrub excuse me if you put a scrog underneath this focus hood like this you're missing all the edges but if you try to put one big plant one little I'm just saying there's this see you can't put you can't put a big plant under a wide hood because a wide hood is meant for a scrog Think about it like a flashlight mm -hmm. that you can adjust. You get that amount of light. You can crank it over one way. You can crank it over one way. And you get a long beam that's real narrow. Or you can crank it over the other way and you get a wide beam that doesn't go as far. 
It's the same mm. amount of light used differently. So, the last caller was in a two by six space. He was moving his hoods. Why was he moving his hoods? Because two by six is kind of narrow. So he was moving his hoods. So 600 watts is okay. But there's another factor too. You could dim your 600 watt. So instead of having a 600 watt light, you brought up a 250 earlier on in the conversation. But remember, once you have a 250 veg and a 600 watt flower, you now have a two light rotation. If you have a two light rotation, it's different than a one light rotation. So I would not suggest you buy a 250 for veg, I would suggest a 400. You would buy a 200 watt veg for a 400 watt flower. You'd buy a 400 watt veg for a 600 watt flower. You'd buy a 600 watt veg <laughs> for a thousand watt flower. What I'm suggesting is, is that veg is gears one, two, and three, and flower is four, five, and six. So when you come out of veg and you start flowering, think about it. If you veg 250 watts worth of plant, now remember 250 watts worth of plant looks like, well, okay, I'll show you what 250 watts worth of plant. This is a four by four space. It is four by four, one foot deep. Um, and you can see it's four by four, one foot deep, 410, call me back in a minute. You can see it's, um, got this one foot deep canopy right here. So you've got the canopy to put the bud on at the start of flower. It was not here when you only had six plants. Nope, I think that's, yeah, six plants. He did not have as much canopy here. So we got 33% more canopy in these two pictures. If you took 600, if you took, if you started flower, which is what this grower did, they started flower with this plant. If you had six plants this size with 400 watts, then each one of these plants would technically be like 70 watts big, 60 watts big. Okay, because six times six is 360, 420, so 65 watts big. However, if you put three more plants in there, you would take the same 400 watts and divide it by nine. So they'd be 40 watt, 45 watts big. So these plants would all be 45 watts big. So this, this plant, and remember now the plants are the same size. So we have to determine, are these plants 45 watts big or 60 watts big? Because if we put too much plant in, okay, listen, all I'm saying is that when you go into flower, and here's the thing, here's like the super size whole thing of everything about growing all of it I'm trying to find a picture. It's very dramatic, I know. Damn it. Once you... All of it comes down to the one thing, and that is the canopy. If you don't start flower with a top in every square, how are you going to finish with a bud in every square? So the question always becomes is, how many plants and how long the veg? So if you, have, if you have one light and it's a 600 watt, then you want to do, I mean, I am gonna tell you, you want to do a four week veg and an eight week flower. That's 12 weeks, start to finish. So you'll get one pound in 90 days. Now, if you're somewhere where it's legal, just go buy 50 clones, put them all in one gallon buckets and just put one plant in every top. And that would look like this. Um, I wanna show you what that would look like because you guys, you guys always see me talk about it. So here is one top. There's 49 plants per thousand watt light. So you'd go get 40 plants or something like that. And you'd put one top in every hole. And then you'd veg for one week. And here's the thing. You would veg for one week, then flower for eight. So you would get a pound in nine weeks. If you veg for four weeks and flower for eight weeks, you get a pound in 12 weeks. If you veg for one week and you flower for eight weeks, you get a pound in nine weeks. But that's plant count and veg time. Most people veg for four weeks. You do like eight plants, veg for four weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now if you were to buy a 250 watt light, remember now you have an eight week veg because you are time locked based on your eight week flower. So you have an eight week veg. Okay, eight week veg. I mean, eight week flower. So you have an eight week veg for sure. Dude, 250 watts is really short for an eight week veg. You really don't have enough mm -hmm light to veg for eight weeks so a 250 watt light is neither appropriate 
for a 600 watt flower, nor is it appropriate for an eight week veg. It does, however, seem to fit at 400 watts. And at 400 watts, what are we talking about? We're talking about a four foot eight bulb T5, the number one selling light in my store. Not anymore because I've got so much stuff in my store. Well, I've had all the stuff in my store for one day. So technically it's still the, uh, still the number one light in my store, but that's the, that's well, I'm, I'm gross, gross, really quick. I want to um, ask you, so well, we were talking about the size of the hood. Okay. And so if I, if you have a, the, the widest hood in the 600 watt lamp, then is it about 50 feet of uh, per foot at that point? Yeah, you see what I'm saying? It spreads it out over a greater area. So yes, you picked an appropriate number. Is that the exact number? Listen, I don't know. But I do know that you have the right concept in your head. That's why I tell you guys, you can measure lumens, par, PFR, whatever it is you want to measure your cannabis light in. Don't care. Think about it in terms of relative. So you can make a lot of horsepower in a four cylinder, but you got to do it with relatively high RPMs. You can make a lot of horsepower with an eight cylinder and you can do it with relatively low RPMs. All I'm saying, torque. I mean, I, I say horsepower, I mean torque, but all I'm suggesting is there's a relationship where how you handle things. Now, in a 250 watt veg with a 600 watt flower, you are going to start flower. Remember, you're not going to have 600 watts until halfway through flower. That's when you turn it up to 600. So at the start of flower, you're going to have a 400 watt veg. So what you can't do is you can't have an eight week veg, put stuff in flower, then veg for two more weeks. That's crazy. So what you would have to do is you would have to veg for eight weeks with a 400, 50 watts per week. You got one bulb, you know, per week. Boom, one bulb, two bulb, three bulb. I don't necessarily mean turn on one bulb. You might put two bulbs further away so at the start of the week it might have one bulb a foot away and like on day five it may have two bulbs two feet away because sometimes you want more light but you don't want it closer then next week you put two bulbs one foot away and then you put three bulbs and all i'm suggesting is that when we look at the pictures like this when we look at the relationship and the space of this all i'm saying is that there's this canopy necessary to absorb the light. If you put a 600 watt light over a 10 watt plant, that 10 watt plant better be 15 feet away. It's not realistic. Why are you throwing 590 watts at the floor? Now, I'm not suggesting you buy as many lights as this particular grower. I mean, there's a lot of lights. You know what we we're talking about earlier there's a lot of lights here i'm not suggesting that i am suggesting that you can buy one four foot eight bulb turn four bulbs off and put it four feet away and you're golden then you mm -hmm. veg for four weeks with four four foot 216 watts worth of light then you know the plants get closer okay you back the light up and you add the other four bulbs then the plants get closer and you shape them up and what you want when you go into flower, when you start flower with a T5, okay, here's something to consider. When you grow outdoors, you know how you see those pictures? Look, dude, they got four foot bud arms. I mean, the buds are this long. They're growing outdoors. Once you're indoors, you don't get that. Don't care what light you use. You don't get those giant bud arms indoors. If you got a four foot arm, can you, where would you put the light? You'd have to have a 13 foot tent. Okay. Indoors, we tend to get two foot bud arms with HID lights. So think about, that's why I tell you when you start flower, it's gotta be a canopy one foot deep. If you have a 400 watt light, it's two by four, one foot deep. If you have, it's, if it's two by four, here you go. It's, it's two by four. You have to have this much canopy if you want a uh, uh, half pound dry you have to have this much canopy if you want a pound and you have to have this much canopy if you have one a pound and a half dry then if you want more we just multiply if you want two pounds you get two six hundreds or a thousand on a light mover so all we're talking about is volume and space of canopy here that's that's the only relationship oh, okay. so you, you get the idea i don't care how you 
I don't care how you spend your electricity. You could spend your electricity <laughs> with a thousand watt light 10 feet away or a hundred watt light one foot away. I, I don't care, but just understand it's not just the light that you also have to pay to cool it. See what I'm saying? Okay. Right. Yes. Um, Grobo, really quick. So um, if I decide to buy a 400 watt, um, maybe an, an MH convertible bulb for that 600 watt magnetic ballast, you think I'd be able to use a 400 watt bulb on that 600 magnetic watt no. ballast? A magnetic, there's no dimming. So a magnetic must have the bulb that matches the wattage. And a digital, since a digital has a dimming feature, some digital dimmers will run a 400 watt bulb. They will not run a 400 watt bulb like a 600 watt bulb. They run it like a 400. They can adjust for it. But if you put a 400 in a 600 watt light, I'm assuming at some point in the near future, the light will just fail for you. So, no. The answer is negative. But then, listen. The is no. Listen, uh, if you uh, want uh, even... Really quick, Robles. Okay. Uh, uh, go I'm sorry. I was going to I was gonna add that um, uh, somebody had told me that the bulb was what drew us the, the, the current from the magnetic ballast. Yes, sir. And I don't know if you heard it about that. It is true. The magnetic... All right, I got another caller. I'll answer that. Hang on a sec. Hey, 503, hang on a sec. Yes, that is correct. But the, the problem is, is that the thing that supplies it, the ballast, does not know the difference. So you can draw 400, but you are burning through. You are being provided 600 watts from the source, regardless of what the draw is. So where do the other 200 watts go? So, yes, but I see your point about the draw, but the answer is I'm telling you, no, it does bad things to the bulb. That's why they make a 400, 600, and 1,000 watt ballast, and even with the dimmables, there are, there's very few dimmables that go from 1,000 down to 400, but they go 400, 250, they go 600, 400, they go 1,000, 600, but you generally don't go 600 ballasts isn't 1,000. So the question really is, if they make those three ballasts and they do it the way they do, how could you think it would work the way that you got going on? Hey, 503, did I lose you? Ah, right. 503, what can I do for you? Good morning. Yeah, good morning. How you doing? Hello? Yes, sir. I'm streaming my hey, I'm curious on why you don't uh, I'm curious on why you don't uh, do much stuff on uh, outdoor growing. Um uh, cuz I'm an indoor store and I'm in Las Vegas. I mean, it's oh, kind of brutal. Yeah. It's not like it's not like I can walk out my door in NorCal and uh, I appreciate the call. It's not like I can walk out my door in NorCal and just be like, these are my plants. Because I'm in a hydro store. It's 118 degrees yesterday. So, that's, uh, that's why I, uh, I'm not a hydro. That's why I don't do outdoor. And <clears throat> I really don't do any kind of growing, do I? In terms of outdoor, I created, um, check this out. Hey, 503, let me, I got a couple things I want to do, so I'll speak to you in a little bit. Um, so I created, I mean, like I created this series with the Bushmaster. I thought that was pretty good. Like I've got this whole series. So keep watching. Because the Bushmaster started with a dream and a six-month budget of twenty-one thousand dollars, which might actually be enough. So to make I've it got happen. this stream of the Bushmaster and how this guy was growing, and you know, I mean, like I put it out there. But in terms of growing, you know, I totally appreciate the call because that is literally how I started the show, wasn't it? Because. I really was going to talk today about, like, literally, there's no reason for me to grow anymore. There's no reason for me to sell anymore. There's no reason. One, I'm out of that age group. I'm not the guy. I don't, I'm, yeah, I was 47 last week. I'm just not the guy that does that anymore. It's inappropriate in my age bracket to be doing these kinds of things. Also, I run a hydro store. I write the book. I do so many consults. I do literally like a consult a day. It's a lot for me to keep up with. 
So there are some things I can and can't do. And, I, and just growing it so slow. Oh my God, it's painful. It's so much work. And it's a 24 seven job. And you watch these Bushmaster videos. You watch these Bushmaster videos. I'm streaming. You got me. Uh, am I on? Okay. Grow. Okay. You watch these videos, and it's so much work. And it's even more work outdoors because they get so big. All I'm saying is, it's uh, outdoors is growing's a lot of work. I'm really not like. Uh, I'm really not like uh, so into growing anymore. I, I do, I do, however, still like being in the industry. I do, however, I do, however, still like. Uh, hang on a sec. Yeah. It's. Streaming. All right. So I do, however like the uh i do ever still like the industry i still smoke I, I own a hydro store but in terms of like growing like <laughs> the magic left the building a long time ago <clears throat> but even when i finished growing and went on to like the next two careers that i had even then um growing was never my thing it's really slow uh, there's so many details. I mean, it's just really slow. So I really wasn't like, like it really wasn't appealing to me in terms of the aspects of growing, dealing. The growing part was way less fun than the dealing part, right? I mean, dealing part's all cash. I love the store. And even when I was done growing, I had no idea. There was no, there is very little of what I do today gets translated from me growing personally and I grew it and I did a damn good job and I did it for a minute but in the end very little of my grow experience translated into this uh, what really what really brought it about specifically five oh three what can I do for you Hey, I got a quick question. Okay. Uh, you hung up or I'm angry, but hey, what, what, what would you give some outdoor plants as the, like the best all-around nutrient? What would you recommend? Um, what would I recommend? For veg. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah. Do you like powders? Yeah. Powders are great. You can literally buy a 10. Okay, here's a, I'll give you a little bit of math. All right, here's a little bit of math for you. This one right here. Damn it, that one. That one's 125, that one's 90 bucks. Come and buy it from my store cash today. All right, that's my super grow boss deal. Listen, and that was what I was talking about earlier is like anybody can show you how to, anybody can show you plants. But that's not what I do. What I do is I very specifically, I very specifically go over the products and how to use them based on the questions that come through my store that everybody asks. And that's an interesting perspective because nobody else, <coughs> anybody can grow a cannabis plant. It's fucking weed, man. All I have to do is not kill it for 12 weeks. All I'm suggesting is, is that there comes this relationship between, between what aspect you're going to make money off of it on and listen, outdoors is a lot of work. Okay. So let's just say that some people do some, you could, let's say there's a couple of products. There's, wait, wait, let's do this. Yeah. Let's do this. Then we'll do this. Then we'll do this. Okay. So these are each, let's just say each one of these is their own product. And this is just straight math. So if you, did I just lose you? Okay, so anyway, 
I'll uh, I'll finish the question. I'm done taking calls for today, but I'll finish the question because I'm gonna have to open the store in a sec. But here's how this works: if you put in 500 ppm of this, then you're going to get 500 n. I mean, that's just it's just one product. If it's 500 ppm. It's 500 N. Okay, if you put 500 ppm of this in, you're going to get 250 P, not P, 250 K. Ah, uh, see? Gotta watch that shit. Microphone still streaming. Okay. Okay. All right, now if you do this one, you're gonna get, if you do 500 ppm of this, you're going to get 500 ppm of P. Um, yes, right, 500, 500, okay, that's why it should look the same. Okay, if you do this one, and I know 500 ppm, but now you get the idea. You're gonna end up with you're going to end up with 500 K. Boom. Fuck. Okay. So much work. I'm streaming. The mic's on. Okay. All right. So now we just do some straight column math and you just tell me what you want, what in terms you want. Because when we look at what NP, when we look at what you want in terms of nutrients, Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking at page 76. So when you look at what you want in terms of nutrients, if you want, oh, you know, okay. So you want more, more nitrogen and grow and more PK and so flower. So all I'm suggesting is that once you sort of get that idea, then you look at this, you go, oh, you want, we just sort of put this into columns and you go, oh, okay, I get it here's the relationship between them here's the relationship and now we know we can create whatever it is we want to create and that's why I tell you guys the facilities I mean, they just use the facilities just use this and this that's all they use because if you want to make a grow nutrient then we would do this check this out if you want to make the grow version we're doing this we just build our own little block right here and we do we just put equal amounts of both in so we get 500 n 250 p 250 k boom look at that now if we want to flower great if we double up if we put this is if we put equal equal amount copying okay so if we just put equal amount and we do this Mike's working streaming we just put that amount right there great all we have to do is double the PK is double the 0 10 10 and now we have a 500 500 500 okay but let's say we want a 500 750 750 okay great we just put three times the amount of the second column in now we have a 500 750 750 Woof, that's 2000 ppm so what do we do Oh my God, we just double the water where we have the nutrients and then we get a thousand PPM. Ta-da! So with just these two products in powder form, you can make anything you need. So when you say, when you go outdoors and you say, we well, want to do powder, blam, there's your powder. And I don't care which brand you use because we just did the math on we just did the math on how to mix your own nutrients. That's why I tell you the facilities, 
unless there's something special where they've got like their blend and and make no mistake about it you know what i mean like everyone has their own gas blend you know what i mean yet you just buy gas at every station unless you want the best gas then you usually go to chevron i mean there's a difference you pay for it there's a difference so i'm just suggesting that at that point this is the relationship between them all right i think it's time for me to smoke one more bowl with all of you sort of end this yeah listen albert collins use npk raw and as long as you meet the ppm requirements of your plant npk raw is great but now you know why i always wear a long sleeve shirt not because i have tattoos just because this is like the best thing i could do for a uniform for my show plus there's no laundry and then now you know why i don't grow pot plants now you know why i don't grow cannabis anymore because it just doesn't interest me and if you like this show and you want to find my books they're on ebay amazon my website thegrowboss.com growboss.com where you can buy see my theme music growboss.com <laughs> Yeah, you can get the growers kit. We got shirts. There's videos for you to watch. Same videos that's on YouTube. Right on. So. Let's see. Who do I have to. So. All right. Oh, so what was I going to do? I was like, oh, yeah, because I'm sitting here getting high and I'm super tired. All right. This one over here with this over here and the, and the this. There you go. That's my book. That's my 20 week tracker. Because the only way you're going to get better is if you track everything you do. Why? I'm just saying, because you're going to forget and get high and just remember. That's the 420 guide with lots of, oh, these are like strain a day articles and personal gardens. And these are like how to care for glass, stuff like that. Poster issue. This thing seems to have a cover falling off. So what is, what is this? Oh, gardens and grow rooms, a book full of examples. Fuck. I just try so hard and everything's just working against me. This is, no, this is, all right, there we go, end of the show, I'm losing cohesion, remember, this blue lab, I bought it for 40 bucks yesterday, listen, I'm telling you, growers fail for lots of reasons, and not all of them are your fault, you mean, well, this goes this guy's fault, but not, a, yeah, it pretty much is. It's pretty much a bunch of people growing too fast, expecting too much. It's pretty much your fault. So, <laughs> I hope my show and my books help you overcome the problems of growing and put a, shed a little light in the reality and maybe take away some of the myth and the drama and the taboo over growing indoors and shed a little reality on it. But here are some great meters that I have more of, so I don't want. Here is a Blue Lab meter with pH and PPM. Like brand new the guy bought it brand new like weeks ago and needs cat food that was his excuse but anyway i mean it's always the same thing your old lady tosses you out why does she toss you out because you spend more time with the plants than your old lady right yeah but like if it was the first month of your relationship with your old lady you'd be like oh i'm all over you i'm all over you but now you're all over the plants so yeah that's always a problem <laughs> Growing is about, listen, listen, listen. Growing is about being consistent. Which is the opposite of hopes and dreams. And for 18 to 49 year old aggressive males. It's the opposite of that. See, I recognize that about me. Oh, I was trying to say goodbye. I have to open the store. I got to see you tomorrow. All right. That's it. Something dramatic happens here, and I fade out to that. Oh, son of a bitch. It's just not working today. And some music. Music.